Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center and our program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our case today comes again from the uh, realm of uh, GYN pathology and it illustrates uh, one of the pitfalls that uh, we encounter from time to time in dealing both with our own cases and those that uh, come to us from uh, surrounding institutions. It's a 68-year-old woman who's had some abnormal bleeding and appears to have an endometrial mass on vaginal ultrasound. She goes to her gynecologist and uh, gets a biopsy, uh, which uh, is uh, then sent for review. Here at low magnification, we can see what this uh, curatage sample looked like. And there are several elements here for concern. First of all, at low power, we see that there's a considerable amount of necrotic uh, debris. Uh, all of this very pink material uh, represents uh, necrosis. Uh, we see there is some blue viable tissue uh, that could represent a uh, uh, tumor. Uh, and so we'll take a look at some of these uh, areas here uh, as we go into higher magnification. Now we notice that uh, there's uh, some degree of uh, glandular differentiation. Um, and here we see what looks like a, a large vessel that may suggest a polyp. Here's a little bit of uh, scant tumor cells right here uh, that have uh, some closely knit uh, and spaced glands um, with, oh, still somewhat oval, uh, but maybe a little bit more rounding up type of nuclei. Uh, so they're beginning to suggest that uh, uh, this is a little bit more solid than just well differentiated uh, tumor. Uh, not very much of it though. So let's look at some of the other areas. Uh, here we have a little bit more of this uh, type of tissue. Uh, we can see again, uh, a little bit of eosinophilic and partly necrotic stroma. Um, and some closely spaced glands, a little bit of uh, glandular open space um, as we see here. Now this is a scant tumor. And so at this point we would say, certainly we have carcinoma present, but of course you want to look at all of the tissue fragments. Uh, here's a benign fragment here, maybe a more endometrial polyp. Uh, and then of course uh, our referring pathologist uh, nicely highlighted an area right here uh, which shows uh, more tumor. And uh, some solid type of growth. Sort of solid like areas here. And then what is uh, certainly a very uh, important thing that we are grateful that they highlighted is this uh, area of potentially epithelial to mesenchymal transformation. Now, um, of course, here we're dealing with uh, magnification uh, that uh, maybe is a little bit less than you might have under your own microscope. Um, but this highlights the presence of um, several uh, myxoid areas and some strands of uh, tissue here in this mesenchymal area uh, that's not just conventional carcinoma. And so uh, not uh, surprisingly, uh, the referring pathologist uh, said uh, that they thought this was a uh, endometrial carcinoma and it had uh, features that to them suggested the possibility of carcinosarcoma. With that, then the patient was referred to our campus for definitive uh, management and further uh, treatment. No immunohistochemical stains were done. Um, and uh, so uh, that's how the patient came to us. Uh, and uh, we will just uh, see what might be considered at this stage. So endometrial carcinomas that have a stromal component are an important uh, uh, consideration. Uh, and primarily because uh, this may indicate a, a more adverse uh, uh, finding. These are usually older patients, uh, and the risk of carcinosarcoma um, arises with advancing age. Um, 
And because carcinosarcoma is by definition a high grade tumor, um, and these are older patients, uh, oftentimes this is an important uh, diagnosis to make and it carries significant treatment and operative implications when you think about staging or type of operative approach. The sarcomatous component is by definition a high grade uh, uh, lesion uh, with abnormal enlarged nuclei and almost all of these will show a TP53 mutation that is usually indicated by strong P53 expression. Occasionally you'll have a null phenotype uh, when you do immunohistochemistry. chemistry. Now in contrast, one of the important differential considerations is endometrioid carcinoma with spindle and or corded components. And these can be sort of myxoid or purely spindle cell uh, areas of uh, varying amounts. Uh, and sometimes, particularly in the corded component, there's a very myxoid or chondroid-like almost uh, stromal type of appearance to it. But this is a lower grade endometrioid tumor without these sorts of adverse implications for outcome or indications for additional staging. And, and in these situations, P53 is not overexpressed. Uh, you're more likely to find um, uh, <clears throat> mismatch repair defects and these sorts of things. And in general, although the data is still limited, uh, these tumors are graded according to the uh, endometrioid component that is present. And this uh, spindle or corded component does not alter uh, either the uh, grading or staging. So with the diagnosis of uh, possible carcin carcinosarcoma from the outside pathologist, um, the patient uh, underwent definitive surgery in our institution and this resection sample was received. As we can see, this is a uh, mostly a blue neoplasm with areas of necrosis, these pink areas, and it extends into uh, certainly the inner one half of the uh, myometrium uh, to some depth. We have an exophytic polypoid component corresponding to the mass uh, that was seen uh, on uh, preoperative uh, ultrasound exam. As we look at this neoplasm, uh, the bulk of the tumor obviously is a uh, largely solid type of uh, tumor uh, with some gland formation um, and areas of squamous differentiation. Um, as we look at uh, a few areas, we can see maybe there's a little bit of an altered stroma here. Um, and as we look at the nuclei, these are kind of a grade two uh, nuclei, still slightly spindly, penciloid shaped cells. Uh, somewhat vesicular, as you can see in the inset there. Um, looking a little further, we want to say, well, what, what other features are here to suggest um, carcinosarcoma? Well, as we see up here, there is an area where uh, for some centimeters, we've got this sort of mixoid bluish change to the stroma. Um, and this appears to correspond to what we saw on that uh, curatage sample. But as we look at this under higher magnification, um, we can see that uh, this uh, mixoid and somewhat cord-like stroma has fairly low-grade nuclei here. I'd call your attention to the inset uh, there at the right. And you can see that these nuclei, um, while malignant looking, uh, they're not uh, bizarre, pleomorphic, uh, high-grade ki kinds of nuclei uh, that we associate with carcinosarcoma. Um, so additionally, uh, immunohistochemical staining uh, was performed on this case, um, as we do uh, fairly routinely with many of our cases. Um, and this lesion was found to be uh, P53 wild type. Um, Overall, the, the grading was probably grade two, although you can see there is quite a bit of solid growth, and so one might even consider a grade three uh, type tumor here, uh, but the nuclear grade uh, was low. Um, the lesion, uh, as you can see, has uh, fairly extensive areas uh, with this uh, somewhat corded type of uh, phenotype, and here we'll magnify this area here as well uh, to get a little bit more
close-up view of what these uh, tumors look like. So you can see that it looks a little bit like a mixed tumor of the salivary gland with this very uh, chondromyxoid type of stroma and uh, streaming uh, cells, somewhat spindled and occasionally in little cords uh, uh, following through. So the pitfall here is a very easy to understand one. Um, but in our observations, there are two uh, circumstances. One, uh, the uh, pathologist sees the carcinomatous component and either misses the uh, atypical stromia, stromal changes uh, or uh, misinterprets them. Uh, so if they miss, miss them, they fail to uh, recognize that carcinosarcoma uh, may be present. Uh, and that's this first uh, pitfall. Uh, both components may not be present or may be present in only a, a minute amount. And so carcinosarcoma should be considered if we're seeing a very high-grade carcinoma, it's anaplastic or very difficult to classify, or um, we have high-grade carcinoma and only a rare spindle cell, cell component. So if you don't have more than a, you know, a, a few fields of this pro process, it's difficult to be sure that this is going to be carcinosarcoma, but you can suggest it. Or finally, if we see only high-grade sarcoma, uh, then we should certainly suggest the possibility of carcinosarcoma, uh, primarily since the other high-grade sarcomas like rhabdomyosarcoma and so forth are much, much less common, uh, and particularly in this uh, advanced age group. The other uh, consideration, such as in this circumstance, is to be aware of the differential consideration of this spindled and corded type endometrial carcinoma. And in that setting, uh, considering doing a panel of P53, P16, which would be expected to be strongly positive, mutated um, in uh, carcinosarcoma, and beta catenin, uh, which is negative in carcinosarcoma, but should be positive uh, in uh, endometrioid carcinomas, uh, may help to, to differentiate these two. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is endometrial adenocarcinoma, FIGO grade 2 with spindle and myxoid corded stromal component, invasive into the uh, inner one half of the myometrium. Uh, this is a challenging area. We appreciate you uh, sticking with us through this uh, area uh, and welcome your comments. If you've encountered some of these or how you manage these uh, concerning four uh, situations, please uh, drop us a line or share a comment below. And of course, uh, we invite you to subscribe uh, so that you don't miss uh, future offerings uh, from our channel. We hope to see you again soon, but until then, thanks so much for joining us.